Hey everyone, it is Bridget here from Bridget's Healthy Kitchen, wishing you a very wonderful day wherever you are in the world and whatever it is you may be doing. I hope you're very well and I hope you are safe. Thank you for joining me on today's episode of Bridget's Healthy Kitchen cooking class. What we're doing today is a continuation of this wonderful celebration of the beautiful, delicious and oh so well balanced Thai cuisine. So today's class is a Thai style green papaya salad, very, very famous throughout Thailand and also throughout the world. This amazingly light and refreshing salad is so incredibly good for us. I thought I would give it a bit of a blast today because it is one of those foods and I got asked the most fabulous question yesterday by the way we did Q&A Friday yesterday and I was asked um, what are some foods that I don't eat and it can be quite a big area of foods that I don't like to consume but to put it quite simply I stay away from processed foods so anything that has been highly processed I tend to stay away from it and I like to cook my food because once you cook your food, you take control of your health, you take control of your diet, and of course you take control of your weight as well because you are now responsible. And when I think of this dish, this um, green papaya salad, everything in this dish is fresh. Everything in this dish came from nature. There's, there's very little process that goes on. In fact, we will be doing the processing today, which is exciting because it means that we are in total control of what is happening with our food. So, um, so the, the Thai um, words for green papaya salad is som tam Thai. Now, som is, um, can be roughly translated into sour and tam can be roughly translated into the action of mixing using, wait for it, ugh, one of these. Now what I have here is a mortar, which is basically a big piece of, uh, <laughs> of stone. It's really, really heavy. I'll be using this today to mix our salad. You don't have to use this if you don't have one, but if you do have one, it's time to pull it out and get it going. And I'll be also using the pestle as well to grind everything into place. And one of the beauties about this dish, and I think the reason why it's so popular um, as a street food in Thailand, is you don't need any, any you know, thing plugged in. You don't need anything electrical at all. It all is done using literally this and a little bit of hand power. So come on down to my bench. Let's get into it. As I was saying, there's lots of health benefits with this gorgeous salad. And it's alive. I like to think of it as it's, it comes from living things as opposed to processed food. And a lot of processed food is just literally dead food. And this is all alive, which is great. So you can see here that I have my, um, my green papaya. Um, which, you know, look, look at how gorgeous that is. I've just obviously cut it in half. And this is a round green papaya. Um, so you can either choose the round version or you can get a more elongated one, which is, which is, once again, you can use either or, depends on what you can get. And the best place to find, whoops, the best place to obviously find our um, green papaya would be to check out your local Asian supermarket, especially if you have an, an Asian supermarket that specializes in um, the more tropical countries like Thailand and Vietnam, they do use quite a bit of this, this green papaya. So that's the first thing that you need to track down is your green papaya. Once you've got that, everything else is pretty easy to find and to use. The only other ingredient that you may um, need to track down, same store that you're probably gonna get the green papaya from, is I have in my little jar here some dried shrimp. So apart from that, everything else is pretty recognizable, which is great. So let's start first. I'll put the papaya to the side. Let's start first. Um, we're gonna, like I said, we're gonna be working directly from our mortar. Um, but if you don't have a mortar, you could actually do this section here in your food processor, just in your little, you know, one of those little, in one of these. Nothing stopping you from just using one of those to get everything mixed through. So the first thing that we um, are going to do is we're going to take our dried shrimp and we're just going to add in a tablespoon, and this, by the way, is for two portions. So this will serve two people as a um, side dish or two to three people as a side dish or um, one person if they're really hungry. <laughs> so um, a tablespoon of our dried shrimp goes in there. And it is essential that you add the dried shrimp because that's really gonna help to create that very authentic flavor that you get from the green papaya salad. So once that goes in there, you're gonna be grabbing your, your little pestle 
and just begin to grind it down. Like I said, it does require a bit of energy, but not too much. Or once again, you can just use your food processor. Now, when you are doing this grinding action, and I can already feel my muscles work. <laughs> my muscles are like, hey, it's too early in the morning for this. Not at all. When you're doing this grinding action, what of course you are doing is you are releasing the flavor from those dried shrimp. And I'll show you the powder that we have created just from that. So let me just lift it up. See, we've created this wonderful powder. So that's kind of the base of the flavor of our papaya salad. So that's the first thing we're going to do. The next thing we're going to do is you can either add um, two whole cloves of garlic. Um, I've already got mine chopped up. I've already helped myself a little bit. So I'm just going to add um, half a tablespoon of chopped up garlic. But once again, we're just going to mix everything in together. Get it and already. Oh my gosh, the smells are fabulous already. All right, we're going to keep working in here. And one of the beauties of Thai cuisine is just how well balanced everything is. So they, know, they understand the salty, which is going to be coming from our dried shrimp. They also understand the sweet, which we're going to add later. They understand the sour, which we're totally adding. And the other thing they add is, or they understand, is the chili potential as well. So when it comes to adding chilies, there is, uh, firstly, we just need to be a little bit mindful that chilies can inflame the gut. So I'm going to leave it up to you guys whether you add chilies or not. If you find that you are quite sensitive to chilies, then you don't have to add them. If you find that you like it quite mild, you might want to add maybe maybe one of these chilies. Obviously, we're just going to get rid of that bit there. That's the inedible bit. And I'm just going to roughly chop them and add that in, just like that. You could stop there. That is quite a lot of chili for someone who doesn't like chili. But you could, you know, for some people, they could add a couple of those sizes of chilies. But I'm just going to add the one. Um, because, you know, I don't, I'm, I, I definitely like a bit of chili, but I'm more to the mild side, and I do find that too much chili can really upset my stomach. So you go with what you feel you want to go with. I'm not going to tell you it has to be overly chili, and I'm not going to tell you <laughs> it doesn't have to be. It's such an individual thing. And a lot of the chili addition really has to do with how we grow up. Like for some people, they've had chili since they were very, very young. And you definitely build up an intolerance to the heat. Or not an intolerance, but you, you build up the ability to just be able to handle it. Right? And you just get used to it. Whereas if you didn't grow up eating a lot of chili, then chances are you definitely are more like me and you are, prefer things on the mild side. And, you know, there's also that whole kind of inference that you have to be really tough, like tough people can handle chili. We also know that that's not true as well. <laughs> I know lots of tough people who um, don't eat chili <laughs> and vice versa. All right, so we've got an almost like a reddish tinge now to our paste, which is great. That's exactly what we wanted. And as I said, you could add one chili, you could add two chilies, completely up to you. I'll let you play around with that depending on what you want. So now that's there. And um, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add in a tablespoon. I've just got in my little bowl here, I've got um, a few roasted hazelnuts. So you're going to add a tablespoon of your favorite roasted nuts. So maybe it's almonds, maybe it's walnuts. I'm using um, hazelnuts. If you don't, if, you've, if you have a nut allergy, you could also at this point in time add in some toasted seeds, like maybe sunflower seeds or even pumpkin seeds would go really nicely in here. But we're after definitely a bit of texture, is, which is really nice. I'm just kind of grinding them down a little bit. We're after the texture. We are after a little bit of oil that's going to be released from those nuts as well and they were just dry fried or dry roasted um but also there's that little bit of flavor once again we're balancing out the flavors so just a bit of a grinding down of that now we're going to add the sweetness and this form of sweetness of course is going to be our prebiotic fiber syrup which is going to help to create the dressing that makes up this um, salad as well so we're going to put a tablespoon of fiber syrup goes in there you notice how I'm not measuring, it's not like exactly has to be a tablespoon. 
around about a tablespoon <laughs> of that goes in there. We're also going to be adding in some fish sauce. And um, once again, the fish sauce is another flavor very necessary in this salad to get a very authentic taste. So I am actually using a coconut nectar based fish sauce from the company New Life. I absolutely love it. Smells exactly like fish sauce, but would you believe it's vegan? <laughs> It's, it's wonderful. If you can't find this, just get the best quality fish sauce that your budget will allow. Best quality fish sauce from your Asian supermarket um, and then go with that. So, oh, smells so good. We're going to add two tablespoons. Now, this is also obviously salty, but this is a little bit sour too. So we're getting those, those balance really nicely. So two tablespoons of our fish sauce goes in there. Remember, remember, you can always add more chili, you can always add more sweetener, you can always add more fish sauce. These things are just for you to add as you deem necessary. So moving that to the side, we're going to add a little bit more sour and this form of sour is going to be with a bit of lime. So if um, limes are cheap where you are, go with the lime. If you find that limes are not cheap where you are, you can also do lemon juice here as well. It doesn't quite have the same balance of sweet and sour that the lime does, but it is, an, it is a worthy alternative if limes are ridiculously priced where you are. So just about a tablespoon of freshly squeezed lime juice. And I'm saying freshly squeezed, not the processed stuff. We want to eat real food. Remember that. We want to eat real food. And that processed um, fish so uh, sorry, lime juice can sometimes just be so artificial. So a bit of fresh lime juice like so if you can't find fresh limes are too expensive go with lemon don't use the artificial stuff so that is looking pretty good give it a bit of a blend and we've kind of got this going on now so it's a little bit wet which is fantastic which is what we want it's a little bit wet it's a little bit chunky from those nuts which is also what we want and the smell coming off it is pretty good too so the last ingredient for our i suppose for our sauce base is i'm actually going to be adding in just a small handful of cherry tomatoes so it's a good idea to cut them in half before they go in otherwise when you squish them <laughs> when you squish them you could get tomato juice all over your face trust me here so <laughs> we're gonna help our cause by not getting uh, by cutting them in half just in case we get a little bit of excess juices squishing all over the place so we're just gonna work not so oh there you go excess juices you kind of want to push down with this one as opposed to um, very heavy handedly squash and that's just going to help your clothes stay a bit tidy and just give it a bit of a, a bit of a squash down remember we're creating we're creating this sauce that's going to go all over our papaya so we now have something like that you don't have to squash the tomatoes completely because you're still going to want to munch on those as you're going throughout so that is the base that is the base complete except for a little taste it's really important that you do this because you need to know what's going on in that sauce and it'll tell you whether you need to add oh gosh it's so wonderfully refreshing wow it tastes really good i'm i'm almost happy enough maybe just a little bit more fiber syrup remember we're looking for balance just a little bit more fiber syrup goes in there and what i'm looking for is that wonderful balance of sour spice salt and sweet and it is just it was probably just a little bit off in terms of the sweet probably could have done with another chili too <laughs> but hey that's personal preference there's a bit of heat in the back of my throat but not too much it tastes wonderful oh just that little bit of fiber syrup my goodness wow beautifully balanced little sauce we have created now absolutely gorgeous so i'm going to sit that off to the side let's talk about papaya now one of the things i love about green papaya is yes you can turn it into a salad you know normally when you open up a papaya cut into it you've got this wonderful yellow flesh so this version is obviously raw and it is the green unripe papaya and it makes the most delicious vehicle for all these flavors that we have just created and what you want to do is you're looking at um around about 100 to 150 grams of the papaya green papaya per person so about 200 to 300 grams 
of this and, and that's quite this is about 100 grams here so just to give you an idea this would would this half of papaya would make about two salads so just so just so you're a bit, of a, bit aware but you know once again it's not exact exact portions um, because you're making just this wonderful salad so you know if you really really like papaya add a bit more but you want to bank on around about 100 to 150 grams which is 3.5 ounces to about 4.2 ounces of papaya per person so get rid of the little seeds don't need them the other good thing to do is to cut off the skin it's easier than peeling it just cut it off and discard so just cutting down with a lovely little sharp vegetable knife like I've got cutting down there to get rid of it turn it over and you can see the way that I've cut it means I'm not trying to cut it like that which can be really really unsafe I'm actually cutting it like this which means that we've got a wonderful flat surface to work from rather than that papaya rolling all over our board which could potentially end in a injury which we want to avoid so those can now get thrown away don't need any of those and it's it's at this point in time that you can either use one of these excuse me you can use like one of these peelers and peel down your papaya and then create what is known as julienne so julienne is a type of cut that is about the size of a matchstick so you would peel your papaya and then you would cut it into little matchsticks like that so that's one option on how to cut it that will take you a bit of time obviously uh, but it is um, one way that you can do it the other way that you can do it and the way that I definitely suggest that you do it is actually to use one of these so this is a mandolin and um, my particular mandolin has already been fitted um, if you can see it's got these little teeth in there so it's been fitted with a julienne blade so I can now create julienne using my mandolin and it is a lot faster and it is a lot easier to use a mandolin if you have one but I'm sure that some of you have even got that julienne um, fitting in your food processor if you've got a really large food, pro food processor you could use that as well so being very careful you can then produce something like that which is that wonderful julienne doesn't take long right so i love this mandolin and if um, this mandolin i've had for oh my gosh i've lost count of the amount of years that this mandolin this particular mandolin has been in my kitchen so it, it does last for a really long time um, it is nice and light and portable i tend to take it with me when i travel just in case i need to mandolin something <laughs> you never know right you got mandolin something so um you want to get your lovely pieces of julienne done you can see I mean that I mean that, that that'll work fine your hand cut one but then you sort of look at this and you go wow that's fabulous so you want to julienne your or your papaya here's some I prepared earlier and um, I'm now going to be transferring you could if you if your mortar and pestle was big enough you could actually do this the rest of the salad in here but because I'm, I've got quite a bit of papaya there, I'm actually going to transfer this now, like I said, to a bowl and complete the rest of the journey. The rest of our salad journey is going to be done using the bowl. So papaya is in there. Wonderful. Let's now think about adding some greens. Um, traditionally, this salad would probably call for um, some snake beans, but I'm going to go one step better for us, just a little bit healthier for us, and beans can be quite high um, and carbs so we're going to be using this wonderful asparagus and I'm using quite lovely thin asparagus spears as well if you can only get the big ones you might want to cut them in half lengthways just to make them small because we're not going to cook these if you're wondering what don't you have to cook asparagus absolutely not we can actually eat it raw especially when it's young and tender like this I've just taken off the ends which are the woody bits and I've thrown them away you don't want to eat those but you do want to eat this gorgeous raw asparagus so I'm going to cut it into manageable lengths so which is around about about an inch which is about two and a half centimeters and we're just going to take these gorgeous asparagus and then throw them straight into our bowl and you will if you've never eaten raw asparagus before you are going to be in for a treat it is fabulous so if you don't have asparagus 
Um, you could also, at this point in time, think of using something like green zucchini. Would actually work in here in thin little strips. Um, you could even use the stalks of broccolini that in thin little strips, once again thrown in here. Any of those types of vegetables. And yes, you can use beans if you must. But these vegetables are definitely just, you know, so optimum for our gut health. So that's why I'm going with asparagus and they have that wonderful crunch and they're slightly sweet. So they're very nice. So that goes in there. Give it a little bit of a toss with clean hands. And then the last thing that we need to do is incorporate all the sauce into our into our um, our mix here Ugh. without smashing the glass bowl. This this is literally a little mini workout. I know we talked about exercise yesterday on Q&A Friday. This feels like an exercise for my deltoids because that's what's holding it up right now. Also for um, for my, <laughs> my wrist. <laughs> it's fantastic. All right. That is looking so good. Let's transfer to a big spoon. And then all we need to do is just to mix everything in together. And what we have created is just the most wonderful, wonderful little salad. Like, like I said, so fresh. So incredibly fresh. Now you could stop here. But why would we stop when we can keep going? <laughs> the other thing I'm going to be adding into our salad, just to give it a little bit more, you know, of that wonderful energy and flavour, is I have a collection of herbs that I've just picked from my garden. Um, this one here is Thai-style basil. So it's like regular common basil, but has a slightly different aroma to it. It's a little bit more, I think zesty is a good way to describe it. So it's kind of a little bit more um, sour. Very interesting flavor. So we're gonna add some of that basil. You could use common basil if you if you don't have any of this wonderful um, Thai basil. I've also got some fresh mint leaves, which of course, you can imagine thinking about that salad, how that is just gonna work so incredibly well in our salad so that's going to go in just picking them off the stalks and the last little herb i have here this is once again um one that you may find in your asian grocer this is vietnamese mint known as vietnamese mint so it's very very pungent and for some people they 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 do find that they pick it out of dishes because it is a little bit over the, over the top so um definitely if you've never tried vietnamese mint before when you go to purchase it or when you're in the supermarket or the store pick it up and inhale deeply and you'll get a bit of a sense of what this tastes like so it has got a very unique very distinct flavor um, so have a bit of a go at it first uh, I, it can be a little bit full on but it once you get used to it it's really it's, it's so delicious to add into your it really is so delicious to add into your food so we're going to just i'm just taking up the little small bits and going to use those as garnish and then picking the leaves, just like that. So I've got around about a handful of freshly picked leaves. You could also add in here, if you don't have any of these, you could, um, you could definitely add coriander, you could add chives, you could even, even add a pinch, add tarragon. Now these are all sort of fresh, light, vibrant herbs. You wanna stay away from your rosemaries and your thyme and things like that and go for the very um, light and bright herbs. So just, Roughly, like, so pull all the leaves together and then just roughly chop them into strips. And the reason I'm doing them in strips and not in leaves is because that is going to make it so much easier to then be able to put through our salad. So what you're kind of wanting is that every mouthful that you get is going to have some little lovely light and bright bit of herb in there. So those are... Oh, it's, it's looking even more spectacular just with that little addition of herbs. All right, let's think about plating. Plating a hello plate. That looks like a good plate. I want to wipe my bench down first. There we go. So, remember this is, you can sort of see, even though there's probably, I could have added another 50 to 60 grams more of the um, papaya, that you get a lot of bang for your buck. And of course, there is nothing stopping you for, at this point in time, from um, adding some cooked chicken through the salad. You could also add prawns, cooked prawns or cooked shrimps. Works really nice in here as well. Um, you could even 
put this on, you know, have a piece of salmon, you know, on the side of this for a really robust, gorgeous meal as well. There are so many wonderful ways that you can serve the salad and um, or just eat it on its own because there's so many wonderful flavors that I just literally, it, this is bursting with flavor. Like I said, wish you guys were here to smell it. I've just got a few little leaves that I'm going to finish it off with. You know, you don't need any salt. You don't need any pepper because everything is literally all in there. Look at that gorgeous, gorgeous salad. You just know that is full of life. This is a bowl of goodness. You know, you've got all those wonderful antioxidant properties from the green papaya. It's, it's also good for your heart health. It will help fight inflammation. It will also help just with your digestive system, just to help things, you know, moving through. And of course, it's delicious. <laughs> so there you go. I hope you make this. I really do. I hope you go and track down your own green papaya and, you, and you're able to make this gorgeous salad. Um, and it's just... There's so much to enjoy here. There is so much to enjoy here. I look forward to having this for lunch. Possibly on my own. <laughs> Can't see anyone at the moment. Okay, they, they'll, they'll start swarming soon. They know it's going to be ready soon. So um, thank you for joining me today, guys. I hope you've enjoyed another wonderful episode of our beautiful Thai kitchen, Thai-style cooking. I know that there's a lot of you guys who love Thai food and also the amount of people that have contacted me so exciting that we're making this salad because they love, love, love this salad. I still remember the last time I had this salad. Um, it was in a market in northern Queensland, which is tropical, so at the top of Australia, in a beautiful town called Cairns. Was it a city? I think it's a city. And it was called Rusty's Market. Anyone who's ever been to Cairns, you guys all know Rusty's Market. It's an open air, vegetable, fresh fruit market. It is phenomenal. There's these little caravans that are parked inside this big open air market. And I had this salad with prawns and it was, it's so memorable. It's one of those food memories I'll never forget. And now look how easy it is we can make it at home. Isn't it great? I'll still go to Cairns though. Cairns is beautiful we went and we um we did scuba diving on the great barrier reef and just out off the coast of Cairns, which was very exciting and then we got to eat green papaya salad <laughs> so thank you guys i hope you've enjoyed that this as much as i've enjoyed it i look forward to bringing you lots more delicious healthy gluten sugar dairy free recipes in the meantime i hope you have a wonderful weekend or you have a wonderful day wherever you are please stay safe Stay well, and we'll see you next time here in Bridget's Healthy Kitchen. Take care, guys. Bye.